chapter six, we'll go through all these things. So by this week, we hope uh, we can cover uh, all this uh, all this uh, section, all right? So um, here we have uh, this chapter. Where we have uh, two two equation that um, you need to memorize. The rest is all theory. Yeah? the rest is all theory. Okay. Um, right. So what? is a cost control why we need to study cost control um, because project management um, at the goal end goal is to make profit and to decide make uh, as a project manager um, we need to make decision right four type of decision proceed according to customer spec uh, proceed with uh, alteration or with uh, changes um, on hold the decision or on hold the projects and collect more information or cancel uh, or stop the projects. So uh, you need to, at a certain stage, you need to make decision, right? So before that, we need to um, learn about uh, what is uh, cost control, right? So in a cost control, we can make estimation, right? So this chapter, you have one or two equation to estimate the current value and a future value. Uh, that one is the later, uh, later section of this uh, module. Huh? Okay. Okay. So there are four type of uh, cost estimation relationship, right? So the first one, uh, CR. Cost estimating relationship. We have uh, we use uh, equation, mathematical equation, and we use cost quality, cost cost relationship, and cost to non cost relationship. So we have four types uh, in project management. So we have uh, uh, mathematical equation that based on regression analysis. So um, I decided not to ask you about regression analysis because. Uh, is is involve a loss of uh, um, very complex mathematics uh, where normally students need to use a mini tab software. There's a software called mini tab. Um, it's quite similar with the Excel form, but it's uh, built in with a loss of uh, calculation. All right. So uh, I do not ask you for regression analysis for your uh, cohort. But maybe your junior batch, I will go into regression, right? Um, then the cost quality. This is a, another uh, curve and a um, analysis cost cost relationship and non cost. Eh? Okay. So this table, uh, I won't go deep, but you go and uh, have a look into it, into it. So you have uh, type one and type two acquisition. Um, type one is uh, one of the kind project with little follow up, follow up, uh, follow on business. Type two is a new project uh, where you need to do a lot of follow ups. So you read like one to eight, one to ten. Okay, so there are two types of uh, acquisition. Right. Okay. So those that you can read on the slide, I won't uh, go through. So go uh, go very fast. So how do you do estimate? You 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 as an engineer, you as a project uh, manager, you do estimate based on data, right? Based on data. So these are the uh, typical uh, sources for your estimation, either through experience, reference material. So this is reference materials. Uh, uh, all those standards, all those journals, paper, all those uh, company IP, right? Uh, market survey, so this one industry survey. Um, uh, knowledge. This one is from the uh, factory floor uh, knowledge or, or the R&D department. Or uh, you can use software um, to uh, do the database inside the company. Uh, or you can uh, talk with the expert, right? Uh, okay. So these are the sources where you can do estimates huh? based on your experience, reference material, you do survey, uh, knowledge you use a software or database, 
and X bar. Uh, expert, it depends on your projects, right? So for example, your project is, is producing the new vaccine for COVID, for example. So you are the project manager, you are not the expert in the, in the vaccine. So you need to go and ask the expert in this area, especially those uh, deal with the medical and also all this. Uh, all right. So this is the subject expert. Lah. Okay. Again, your, your job as a project manager is to make sure the project runs successfully, uh, meet the time and cost, and then meet the customer requirement. Okay. Okay. So they are they are um they have a few types of uh, estimates. Huh? First is called paramet parametrics estimates. So parametrics estimate we use statistics data. Okay. Another one, next one is called analogy estimate. Analogy is uh, you compare the features of the projects. Huh? Analogy estimates. Analogy means uh, you, you look at the history, how that things happen, right? So then you predict the pattern. Okay. You compare the features and, and then you adjust accordingly. Okay. Then, or you, you go for expert judgment. This one, you uh, go to the subject expert where they have a specialized knowledge. For example, the COVID uh, test kit, for example. Right. So there are three types of uh, estimates that we have for this module. So you have parametrics, paramet uh, parametrics, analogy, and expert judgment. You have three types. Huh? You have three types. And then in later, uh, in chapter eight, the last chapter, we will focus more about statistic data. In fact, the previous, the previous chapter, um, where you do the networking, um, you do estimate also based on the um, normal distribution uh, curve, right? The sigma, right? The the standard variation, and then you estimate uh, how many percent that you probability of uh, success do the project successfully so that we cover last uh, last chapter okay so if you're not clear you can uh, uh, look back at the previous uh, uh, lecture huh? okay so first type of uh, estimate is an order of magnitude analysis order of magnitude so this is made without detailed engine data so for the first type if you use the order of magnitude analysis then the accuracy will be around 35 percent accuracy will be 35 percent huh? plus minus okay so these are uh, these are the the order of magnitude analysis so this example um past experience scale factor, paramet parametric curve, or you use statistics, uh, capacity estimates. So this one you estimate based on the previous data. Okay. Now, one of the weakness of parametric uh, curve, if you use statistics, um, if you're dealing with uh, new products, then this one might not be the suitable one because New products might not give you the correct curve or uh, um, or estimates because you're dealing with new projects. Huh? Uh, but if you are dealing, dealing with uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, manufacturing products, which have been carried out for years, um, for example, car manufacturer, the 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 fixture. The zig, the design philosophy, everything was there. And then you, you for example, you are the um, Proton company, you are making automotive uh, uh, products. So basically, you already have an idea what is the market cap, or what is the market needs already, right? And uh, the design that able to sell. So if you look at the Proton Malaysia, 
uh, yeah, we launched a lot of series of models of car. And in, inside the company, they, they have a data, statistic data, what kind of model, what kind of design that actually attracts and what kind of target market they want to go in. Huh? Okay, the first one is the order of magnitude analysis. Okay, so um, order of magnitude, they estimate a top-down estimate applied to level one of work breakdown structure, WBS. So this is a new, new word for today. And for the later chapter, WBS, you will see a loss of time, especially in the last chapter. What is work, work breakdown structure is the one that at the bottom diagram. So what I mean by level one, level two, level three, until level six? Uh, WBS, uh, work breakdown structure, if you are mentioned about level one, means level one, level three, they are a management level or those that can make decision. Level four, level five, level six, they are technical levels with these functional units. Okay, so they have a, uh, uh, there. Uh, so what is important for WBS is that you know level one prefer to work, level four they meant to work. Uh, okay, okay, yes. It's like the decision level uh, or the, um, the work breakdown structure means that uh, if you refer to level one, what does it mean? Level two, what does it mean? So level one is the highest level that can make, that can overrule all the decisions. They have a higher level. So uh, level six is the lowest one, but this is this is uh, six level um, that we use to, to, uh, to explain um, about uh, project management. So this is an example. So if you live in a Chicago and you want to build a home of your dreams, so you con you you, uh, you contact a construction contractor, um, and your data or your statistic cost of the house in this area is uh, one hundred twenty dollar square foot, right? So in Los Angeles, it can be double the price or triple the, the price. Okay, so this is a, a example of a order of magnitude. So you can uh, uh, you can compare based on the, the the location, based on the statistical data, right? So each region have their own uh, estimates, right, or segment. For example, if you change this example to uh, automotive car, so each type of the car have a, they have their range. Right, sport car have their minimum range. Of course, don't don't have the maximum cap. The 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 starting price will be there, right? Uh, okay. Uh, just now is the top down estimate. Top down estimate. Another one is. Uh, okay. Another one is. Uh, another one is the. Uh, Approximate estimates. Approximate estimate is about plus minus 15% accuracy. So approximate estimates is uh, also made without uh, detailed engineering data. So it's a prorated estimate. Prorated means you look at the, 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 the earliest one. Uh, for example, January to June, what is your uh, data show you? Then you project for the next month, next month, next month. Okay. Separated. Huh? Okay. So these are the the, um, the way we estimate analogy, parametric curve, and so on. Huh? So another one is called uh, definitive estimates or bottom-up estimates. So just now it's from top to bottom. Now it's from bottom to up. 
another one. This is the definite estimate. So this is accuracy, you have plus minus 5%. Okay, so as you can see, bottom to bottom down and uh, down to up uh, have a uh, accuracy. Uh, we, we look at WBS uh, level one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you from bottom up, we have plus minus about 35%. If you have uh, uh, from the bottom, you have a plus minus 5%. Okay, so just now you have uh, something like here. Here also have a 15% plus minus. It depends on what kind of uh, approach you use. So why do you think if you uh, estimate from the bottom, uh, WBS bottom to up, give you lower, uh, not lower, higher accuracy? Why? More data. OK, correct. So level one to three is uh, management level. So normally management level, they, 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 don't, they don't really understand what is happening at the bottom. OK, they only look at numbers. Right. So if you bottom up, you know what actually happened, what are the difficulties, what are the material costs, what are the transactions that have been done. Okay, so that's why the accuracy can be um, can be uh, uh, five percent, right? Plus minus five percent. Okay. So they are they are well defined engineering data with vendor codes, complete plans, specification, and so on. So that's why from bottom up, uh, they are more accurate. Huh? Um, another method for estimate is use learning curve. So learning curve is a graphical presentation, um, usually applied for manufacturing uh, operation. Okay, learning curve. Huh? Okay, so this is uh, um, a table that show you um, the accuracy of type of methods that you use. For example, parametrics, the accuracy will be uh, so and so, and time to prepare in, is in days. If you use analogy estimating, your accuracy uh, will be about here, and time to prepare in weeks. Engineering estimate methods or grassroots, uh, you need months. Okay, so you have uh, all these uh, method uh. So the WBS relationship, WBS is means level. So parametric they are top down, analogy they are top down, engineering estimated they are bottom up. Okay, so um. So import, what is important in this table is that you know the estimating method, the WBS relationship, whether it's uh, from top to bottom or bottom to top, um, then the time to prepare. Accuracy, you roughly know, uh, roughly know the accuracy is, is there. This one you read, huh? Okay, estimating. Uh, con this is the construction estimating table. So you have a list of things that you need to uh to do. So the manual is is a good good uh, tools for you to use. Uh, this is an example for construction. So you just uh, go through the list from the top to bottom, and then you estimate the the cost accordingly. So you just read the manual, and then you prepare. Okay, so this is another table for type of uh, estimates and the accuracy given in the table. Okay, so you have class one until class six and the types of uh, estimates, right? So I can see here um, the, the most uh, accurate is the definite, definitive uh, 5%. 
and then uh, yeah, the worst one is order of magnitude. So, so this is another example for checklists. Um, if you want to do work, what, what are the checklists that you required for the uh, class of estimate? So one until six, you refer back to this table. So these are there's a list for you to go through. All right. So there are 21. This is the just an example of checklist. So each company have their own checklist. Uh, this is uh, just for the um, textbook uh, for education purpose. So we give you uh, this table. Okay. So you can see there, there's a long list um, and you can see the things that you need. Uh. Data required for preparation of estimate, they, they have a lot of things that you need to go through. Yeah. Okay. The next one is a uh, uh, life cycle. So, so there are different stages for um, estimates. So this is uh, for in-house projects. Um, so the first one you have a uh, conceptual planning main and termination stage. So you have four stage of uh, estimates, four stage, uh, conceptual, planning, main, and termination. So the rest you read now. Huh? Important that is you, you, you understand there is a uh, four stages. Uh, so this kind of type of question will be in the section A of the question when it comes to final exam. Um, pricing process. This is uh, again we will start to look at uh, WBS, the work breakdown structure, level one until level six. Um, okay. So what mean by operational tools here? Operational tools here normally developed by the project office or project management office. Uh, input from the functional units. Those are coming late one. I, I before we start the class, we already give you the scope of your Friday test one. Huh? I already give you the scope. What question going to come up? Okay. Uh, Friday. This Friday your test one. You absent. There's no retest, so you absent straight away get zero. Uh, your MC doesn't count for test one. Okay. So. Um, yeah. So these are all the examples of uh, organization chart and, and so on. Uh. Okay. Um, okay, the rest you read. I want to highlight is that for most of projects, a loss of uh, final decision will be the chief executive um, that approved the final cost. So this is uh, functional units, how they uh, pricing flow, functional pricing flow. So what they do is that they from all the section, then go into departments, then go into functional management, then go up to the program uh, management. Then you will uh, look back. So the functional units. Main hours. Main hours uh, submitted for each task. They are the lowest pricing element and the time freeze per month. So man hours means they pay you how 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 much per hour, uh, per head. Uh. Okay. So they will calculate the value or the cost for that project. Um, then they they come out. Uh. So the labor rates is a uh, twelve month periods labor rates. So they 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 estimate based on uh per annual uh, annual uh.
So how can a company predict uh, salary structure five years uh, in five years? So I'll give you all. Uh. So there are three scenarios. Uh. One is underestimates. When you underestimate, you increase cost and decrease profit. If you overestimate, then your projects will, will not be competitive. If your project is government funded, then uh, you should negotiate when you um, bid for the contract. Okay. So there are three scenarios. Huh? There are three scenarios. If you underestimate the salary structure, the cost will increase. Your profit will, will, will go. If you overestimate, then uh, your, your, your bidding or the, you, your quotation will not be uh, attractive. All right. Uh, so for man hours, uh, for labor rates, is based on historical costs in business base hour. So when you graduate, your salary actually already been fixed by the market. Like if you work at an engineer, junior engineer, why they pay at that rate? Okay. Um, unless the government interrupt or intervene the process, for example, we just, our government just fix the minimum salary. Yeah. So um, in from the business perspective, uh, this is not a good thing. When you fix a minimum salary, um, it in fact uh, will increase the operation cost. So it means that you force the business to perform at a certain level because you already fixed that 1,005 or 1,008 per engineers, for example, or per, per minimum pay rate or for all the stuff you, you, you employ. So it actually gives pressure to the business that you need to perform at a minimum level to cover the worker uh, payment, right? So that, that, that is one of the um, side effects if the government um, interrupt the systems. Um, so what factor that affect the base rate? based on experience, the budget, and the local outlook. Okay, so uh, so this one you can see um, if you go, especially in the technical field, uh, um, most of you, you graduate with an engineering uh, degree. So they will look at your experience, um, what projects that you have been covers, and then the budget, right? Now, for example, my previous FYP students, um, before he graduates, he already get a job from Singapore, right? He get a four thousand sing dollar uh, per month as a fresh graduate. So why he get that high? It is because uh, his FYP was related to his current jobs, right? He have the skill set they need, so they pay uh, four thousand per month uh, salary as a fresh graduate. And also they also have a budget for that. Uh, they are in the expansion phase. So we went in the market at the, at the right time. And also the local outlooks means the, the markets looking for this kind of uh, skill set. And there's a competition there. So if you don't give that uh, competitive uh, rates, then other people will get the talent. Um, so the third type of the scenario is that most of the prominence industry, for example, aerospace and uh, defense, normally they are government contracts. So normal contracts, if you fall under government contracts, the salary actually already negotiated uh, before they go for hiring. They didn't negotiate and estimate the cost already. Uh, labor hours submitted by functional units are often overestimated. Okay. Fear that management will cut the budgets. So this is a, a, a culture 
among the industry. So if the boss asks you to estimate something, will affect some percentage from what you propose. You to estimate something, you will mark up a little bit. So uh, when at the end of the negotiation, you will get the, the, the rate that you uh, that you propose. Huh? So this is uh, the scenario. So what is the reason the management tends to reduce the labor uh, labor hours? What do you think? What do you think? Huh? To save money, uh, what else? Why? Why? Why do management tends to reduce the labor hours? Why? Huh? Uh, uh, why why the management don't cut their own salary? Why? Why why they go and cut the the those uh, uh the WBS the level four five six salary? What? Uh, okay. So uh normally they have their uh issue there so one is uh, they don't have no money so another one is that they want to win the the bidding they want to uh, get the projects they are so desperate so they press down the the the, the man hours uh, 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 quotation what's in the in the in the bidding you 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 need to put in what is the how many men that you employ for these projects and what is the hourly rate that you you charge for them? Okay. Uh, what are the conflicts will arise between project manager and function manager? Yeah. So you as a project manager, you 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 want to get the projects. You want to make sure the project successful, right? So. Your customers always want the lowest cost, but you know that your minimum cost is what, right? Uh, so, uh, project manager, you are from the interest of projects, but the functional manager, you are more towards the employees below you, right? The expert, the talent that work below you. So you want to keep good people, right? So what are the solutions if you are the project manager you can do to resolve these conflicts? What you can do if you have uh, transparency, okay? Huh? Uh, okay. Uh, transparency things is very subjective. It depends on uh which position you are or what, what department you are right um if you are in sales transparency is good if you're in sales uh means that you can see uh, those perform a uh, company really you reward them but if you are in the uh, technical department uh if you have transparency in your salary pay uh payslip it's very sensitive, um, especially those joined 20 years ago and the one who freshly graduates. Uh, the pay rate normally will not be the same. Although there's an annual increment, but the increment normally is too slow compared to the fresh graduates. Uh, so just for info, uh, you when you graduate, sir, uh, when you get the first job, don't go and show off your your salary to those uh, senior people. Uh, normally, they are those senior people. Uh, I mean, technical guys. Their salary is actually lower than yours, uh, unless they are really perform They are they are expert in that area. Then that's another things. 
But if you like you go into a normal company, um, those senior uh, technician or their senior engineers and the fresh graduates, uh, because the different scenario and the different HR policies. So normally, if you're really good in your area, your fresh graduate, your salary will be a bit slightly high compared to your uh, maybe uh, two years experience uh, colleagues. Your salary might be a little bit higher compared to your colleagues. Normally, yeah, normally. So don't go and show off your place sleep. Uh. Then you create some conflicts to HR department. Right? That's why there's a rules uh, in your contract. They say uh, you cannot you cannot show your you cannot tell your service. It's a uh, confidential. But this this kind of thing cannot avoid one. Uh. Once uh, the the more you works uh, in the company, uh, you will accidentally they will know one. Uh. Uh, they will know one. Uh. Okay. So yeah. So how you solve this conflict is that you select members from the project team. They are really uh, useful for that projects. Okay. Uh, then uh, you need the atmosphere of trust. Um, so you, you need communication. Again, communication is important as a project manager. All right. First project manager, you, you, you have a lot of data actually. And uh, you, uh, some some info you cannot share with a uh, specific department. Uh, okay. okay, so we go into overhead rates already. So what I mean by overhead rates? Um, this is from the website. Um, Ongoing business expenses that cannot be directly attributed to the specific activities. Huh? So, um, and then overhead rate. There are two words here. One is overhead, one is overhead rates. Overhead rates is a cost allocated for the product, uh, production of the products or services. Okay. Okay. So what is an uh, example for overhead rates? Huh? So overhead rates. It means uh, the rates that before the OT come in. Okay. Uh, what I mean by OT? There's a labor law that um, enforce in all the countries. Malaysia have our own labor laws. Uh, US have their own labor laws and so on. Right. It depends on the country. Um, so you need to keep your workers not to go for OTs if can as a project manager. Right. So if this is a highlight, care must be taken, however, that other division do not absorb additional costs so that, that, that you, you have a, a remain competitive in your projects. Okay. Okay. So Development of uh, overhead rates, you have a separate element. You have direct labor rates, direct business, uh, and projection of overhead expansion. Right? Direct labor rates is very normal. Like they pay you um, 15 ringgits per, per hour and so on. Right? So this is a very direct, this one. And direct uh, business based pro uh, projection, this is on the uh, necessary materials and uh, direct costs. This is more on the materials outside the labor costs. Okay. Yeah, also. So they are foundation to determine the business base, the actual dates, costs uh, of the project completion, your data, marketing, marketing also uh, spend a lot of money, uh, management goal and past performance. Projection, this is based on data, based on, uh, you know, projection, you have uh, the more, more detailed one you learn in your SPM or your 
mathematics, you have those plot, and then you come up with the trend, trend line. So this is one of the projection. Okay, the rest you read now. Okay, so you have these are all the tools that you can use for projection, historical uh, regression, change in public law, for example, minimum weight, uh, how how much, what is the OT rates, and so on. Um, yeah. Okay, the rest you read. This one you read. Huh? So series structures, overhead structure, labor hours, there is the input for your pricing for your projects. Um, sub topics, material, parts, subcontracts, and so this one you read. Now. Okay, so about flight and travel, this, this one depends on how big is your projects. So if your project is small, then estimates uh, for travels and flight, you estimate based on uh, the, the rate. Now the day we have computers, you go back, uh, go to the uh, delivery services website or flight services, you, you can get all these rates uh, very directly. Uh, but for very high volume, you estimate about three to five percent of the direct labor cost. Okay, but now the day again with the uh, information uh, available on the website or with a good relationship with all these uh, um, delivery services company, uh, actually you can get a direct uh, quotation from them. Okay, so this you all this uh, you read, huh? What is you read? Um, this is a material planning flowchart. Material for planning flowchart from statement of work and it flow accordingly. Okay. Now, again, this is an important features that um, I ask you to draw the uh, material planning workflow. Right. So, um, it's very direct, so you just uh, memorize the shape and then um, how the material planning workflow works uh, from a statement of work until come up with a budget. Okay. This is another table for procurement activities, uh, how it goes. So this one you also you read. So this is for um, monitor monitor, material, acquisition, forecast, and so on. This one you read now. Um, when you do as a project manager, uh, one thing you need to, um, might be helpful is that um, the, when it comes to quotation, volume can affect the price, huh? especially in the uh, manufacturing. Um, the more you buy, the lower cost of that particular parts, you can press down the price. Okay, uh, so it depends on the 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 purchase order. For example, previously I worked in the metal stamping, uh, precision metal stamping company. So in the quotation, we already quote already. Uh, there's a range of uh, price. If you order uh, within a few thousand parts, then they give you one rate. For example, sixty cents for that part. If you if you order more than half a million, then it might be cheaper. Uh, maybe it can be half of that, maybe 30 cents per piece. Okay. Uh, uh, of course, the more volume you, you put into your quotation, uh, you will give stress to the production and make sure your production able to reduce the reject rate. Okay, so there are 13 steps of uh, sequence to uh, do pricing, huh? to do pricing. So there are 13 steps. So I'm not going to go, I give you all the, the steps. Huh? So you go for work requirement and then you go for the, the analysis, book breakdown, price up and so on. So there are 13 steps. 
Okay. Okay. So there are 13 steps. So this, this kind of uh, 13 steps also uh, part of the question section A kind of theory kind of uh, question, right? Things that you can memorize, you can uh, write out steps one, step two, step three, and that one is a section A kind of question. Okay. So the rest you read. So this is a typical pricing report, uh, which you break down uh, with all this. So this one also you read lah. So you have a uh, detail breakdowns for each uh, work breakdown station, uh, WBS element. So you have a six level. So each level have their own uh, cost breakdown. Uh, total uh, project manpower curve for each uh, department. This one is from the uh, functional units. You have a monthly summary yearly contribution data. Okay, rest you read lah. You have a loss of uh, reports. Huh? Uh, report. So these are all the pricing reports that um, you need to aware of huh, in the project management. So they are eight. Huh? There are eight typical reports. Huh? Eight typical reports. So upper level executive, what they do is that they select, approve, and prioritizing uh, the projects. Okay. So this is the typical uh, uh, main power loading. So for example, the y-axis is main power in the month, main power in the main month. Uh, then this is uh, the month, December until the next year. So this is the projection of manpower. So December to January is about 20 something. Then it dropped when it comes to January, maybe because of after Christmas, uh, no buying power and so on. The market will, will drop a little bit. Then by March, the, the production start to, uh, the, the order start to come in. So you need more manpower and so on. So you have a, a zigzag kind of uh, projection. Okay, then the department manager, they will get the average line. They will collect all the dot data and then they will get an average for that particular year. For example, from January to January or Jan January to December. Okay, so they will smooth out the manpower curve. So this is called smooth up. So they will get the average. Okay, so what is the benefit of doing this? The department manager, they smooth out the curve, manpower curve. They able to eliminate the fractional man, man hours per day. They don't need to go very detailed into each day of the cost for the, man, for the manpower. Okay. So this is using the data to do the uh, smooth out curve. Huh? So these are the questions that you ask when you do the man hours or smoothing the man hours, whether the department has sufficient uh, people to do the job, or what is the rate, what is the current rate for the functional department uh, to complete the projects? So these are the two questions, okay? So if we use this curve to do analysis, so you have a y-axis, again, you have the rate, manpower rate, um, you have the months, okay, and you have a loss of area. So for example, so you have a curve A, curve A show the manpower requirement for the given department after times moving. So the functional manager give you some input, they give you which, the black color one, curve A. Yeah? Then curve B represents a modification to a time phrase curve that account for reasonable project management. So uh, the big one, 
the big uh, black color region here is from the functional units. And then you as a project manager, you further smooth out the, the cost by giving the orange color curve B. You, you reduce a little bit based on the needs of the projects. Okay. Now the difference between the two, the different region between the two is important. It reflects the amount of money the contractor may have profit owning to remaining and remaining the activity. So this is the place where you can play around with your cost. Okay. So curve C, curve C is a bit, you increase a little bit at the average uh, from uh, the previous one. For example, curve B, curve B is at uh, about 18, 18 uh, dollar per hour, for example. So start from February, you increase a little bit. Maybe you estimate there is an increase of uh, uh, sales in that month, so you need more people to complete that project, or you want to push for that projects, then you push the rate up a little bit. Okay. So difference between curve B and curve C equal to the amount of money that profit from curve A and B. So curve A, curve B, and B and C. So B and C is this area. Okay, is this area? B and C is actually is you can say is equal to the black color region that highlight in the in the graph. So you can play around the area depends on the urgency of the projects. Okay, ah. because you still need to communicate with the um the functional managers. If you reduce the cost, then they have uh, conflicts. If you increase the cost, then they will help you because they get more pay. Uh, but if you reduce the cost, you need to explain to the functional manager why you charge a certain rate. Uh, okay. So you need to explain in the, before you start the project, you explain to the in the PMO office, you explain to the team, right? Actually, you're not you're not changing anything, you just uh, do some adjustment here and there. The total cost still there, but you adjust, but because you want to focus on a certain things, so you adjust the curve up a little bit. That's why you see there's a increase in pay per hour from February until November, for example. So this is another, another uh, pricing review uh, procedure. Okay. So this one, you have a look at your free time. Sir. So this one is a quite lengthy uh, detailed procedure. Okay, from the management, go, uh, go down and then you bounce back. Huh? You have a functional man, uh, managers here. Okay, you have project team here, project manager here, then the management here. So this is level one, two, three, uh, WBS, huh? level one, two, three is here. Then four, five, six is here. Okay, the rest you read. Okay, we have a short break here. We let's we next we will look at how you estimate the high risk projects. Okay, we have ten minutes breaks. Huh? Uh, we continue nine one zero one. Ten minutes breaks. <laughs> 